quiero tenerte muy cerca, mirarme en tus ojos, verte junto a mí. Piensa que tal vez mañana... Good evening. Um, this is like old home, for, um, old home week for me because I recognize so many people here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna Carbonell, and I thank you, thank you. <laughs> I was with NBC and ABC both uh, for 15 years each, so you can tell I'm not a young kid. And. Uh, but it's my honor, and um, i was uh, been granted the privilege tonight to be here among so many talented and beautiful people, and as the song says about our island, it is preciosa. Pero más que preciosos, somos dichoso, todos nosotros que vinimos de la isla del encanto, Borinquen. Okay? <laughs> um, uh, now please join me in welcoming, we, we are making a quick change for the singing of the national anthem, but I think all of you won't be disappointed because we have George Rios who's going to do the rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Come on, George. Thank you. Please rise. Most of you know that in our tradition, the Hispanic world, we pray. A gentleman named Francis Scott Key wrote a four-verse piece of prose known as the Star Spangled Banner. And only if you read through all four verses do we realize he wrote a prayer for us. At the time he wrote the prose, there was no indication it would become our national anthem in 1933 by act of Congress. What I like to do, I like to pray the original verses, not all four, the last <laughs> verse, the last verse come to know, be known as the prayer verse. In the Roman Catholic, where I go, uh, hymnals, you see two verses. And most people have forgotten that for over a hundred years, colonial America with its 13 colonies and 13 stars on the flag, began all programs with these verses. Now, they sang all four. They never got tired. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I see our, our illustrious uh, Korean uh, 65th Infantry right here. Uh, <laughs> you may not know it. But Cordero here is a great singer, a great tenor. He's still singing. Uh, I'm going to do a verse that sometimes people have not heard. Call it the prayer verse. Yeah. In honor of this occasion when we should pray. Pray to honor uh, our illustrious uh, 100 that are being inducted today and for this occasion. So bear with me uh, as I do this. In the verse you all know, which will be our second verse, please join me. And I want to hear the rafters shake. <laughs> oh, thus be it ever. Well. 
and free men shall stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heavens rescued land. Praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause it is just and this be our motto in God is our trust and the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Oh, say, can you see by the dawn early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Peril of sight for the rampart we walk were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bomb bursting in air. That our flag was still there. So say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Remain standing. And now, please join me, uh, the talented founder of Musica de Cámara, a true icon in our community, Eva de la O, will lead us in singing La Borinqueña.
Please take your seats. Now, before we start our program, we have a very special guest all the way from Washington, D.C., and all the headaches that we've been dealing with. <laughs> and I'm sure he's going to have some great news for us. Our U.S. Congressman, the one and only, our friend, our protector, our everything, Mr. Jose Serrano, Congressman. Thank you so much. I feel like, uh, after listening to those two voices, I feel like Frankie Avalon following Frank Sinatra. <laughs> That's right. Now I'll get a bad tweet from Frankie Avalon. <laughs> I got a lot of bad tweets last night because I've been dealing, <clears throat> and forgive my voice and my looks, which you've dealt with all my life, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm tired because the last three weeks to four weeks. It's been roughly 3 a.m. <laughs> every day. And interesting, either negotiating when nobody wants to negotiate, or just dealing with piecemeal approach to opening the government when what they needed to do was open the government. That's the bad news. The good news is that I got into all of that fight because I'm the only New York City member of the Appropriations Committee, and so everything you saw was an appropriation. And so before I speak briefly, as I will tonight, uh, and, and run off to a couple of other events which these folks know about, and Tony Burgos knows how these things work. He's got to go change into, a, into a, a, a tuxedo to go to another event, you know. Tony, he owns about 15 tuxedos, but you know, <laughs> you should have just brought one with you under your clothing. But anyway, uh, what we have in Washington now, and we all have uh, an opinion, and when you're in front of a group like this, you have to be so careful about the opinion you put forth because there are people here from Luis Garner Costa and others that can give us great opinions based on history and on fact. But I really believe that the Tea Party believes we don't need a central government. I really believe that the Tea Party, while claiming to be patriotic, may be doing more harm to this country than anyone else. And, and, uh, and I have to tell you something. I learned to gain so much more respect for people I already respected. It seemed to some of you improper for the president to continue to say, I won't negotiate, I won't negotiate, I won't negotiate. He was right, we didn't negotiate. Because, because what they wanted to negotiate was doing away with Obamacare. Now Obamacare was approved by, and by the way, I was the first one to call it Obamacare, and I tell you why. I tell you why. 20 years from now, we're going to have Social Security, Medicare, and Obamacare, and that'll be his legacy, you know, <laughs> because it will stand. They wanted to do away with it. It passed both houses. It was signed by the president. The Supreme Court stood up in favor of it. Get over it. Get a life. Leave it alone. They, everything that came, it, it was, they insisted. Then what you have is a situation that you've read about, but you need to hear it from someone like me, the Tea Party is not a party. It doesn't exist as a party. It doesn't have a leader. But it has a movement that will take moderate Republicans. Listen to this. A liberal Democrat hoping Republicans were back in control because they run to the right of Republicans, if that's possible. It's like falling off a cliff, you know. And then they oppose these guys. So all these guys who went along with this deal are going to get opposed by their own party, and they're self-destructing to the point where through gerrymandering they can continue to win local elections, but they probably won't win a national election in a long time to come. And we have to deal with on a daily basis. Let me tell you, the leadership in the House, Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer, were great. And one of the people that I gained a lot of respect for was, and you know, Rafael de España dice que las apariencias engañan. And you see Harry Reid, such a kind of low-key guy, he stood his ground and didn't give an inch. It helps to be an ex-boxer. They never forget. <laughs> they never forget how to swing. And that's what we're dealing with. And so now the government is open again, but it's only till December and to January where we'll have to face this again. And I have two roles. One is to do what you elect me and support me and pray for me to do. And then I also feel that I have to look out for a place called Puerto Rico because they don't have the representation that they should have. 
Now that's not a pro statehood comment for anybody who's gonna have a heart attack here. Although, although if I was sarcastic, I would say it's very easy to be against statehood when you're living in a state, but that's another issue <laughs> for another day. You know, uh, we need a national psychiatrist to deal with that issue. Uh, Central celebrating 40 years, and I'm celebrating my 39th year in public office. This is, <clears throat> this is probably the only place, this is probably the only place where you can brag about how long you've been around because Central is about history and about numbers and about accomplishments or not. And I got elected to the state assembly when Aunt Bean was mayor, when Nixon was president, the Yankees were a losing team and the Mets were a winning team. <laughs> and I think that's coming back. And I'm now the number three person on the Appropriations Committee from the top. And I'm the only Puerto Rican that was ever chairman of a subcommittee of the Appropriations Committee. That committee is so powerful, they don't call it chairman, they call it cardinals, like the College of Cardinals. <laughs> So Nita Lowy, who is a ranking member, then became the first Jewish cardinal ever, and it, it was really <laughs> quite an accomplishment. But, but Centro is very important to us because Centro continues to be that one place where Puerto Ricans can say, this is our history. And I'm terrified at the fact that our history in New York City may be lost if we don't catalog it and we put it together. <laughs> now. Now, why is that important, and as I close, why is that important? Because I think for a Dominican, for a Colombian, for a Mexican, for anybody who now is moving, for instance, into the South Bronx, my district changes, I play to a new audience every five years, you know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, for them to know what their history is, they also have to know the history of the Latino community in New York. And the Latino community's history in New York is called the history of the Puerto Rican community, how it started, how it got done, things that are taken for granted now, like my father picketing, picketing to get one hour of Spanish TV on WWRL, on WOR, or Mario de Lara in the mornings on WWRL telling people, I trabajo in Brooklyn para los que sean costureros, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's what we did. Or when there was one, or when the first Gucci Frito came to the Grand Concourse and people thought if they were gonna you know, die and the, the country was gonna come to an end. All that history is important. Now you're wondering, so you're telling us about the history, Serrano, how come you're not wearing one of these I'm 100 Puerto Rican? There's a reason. See, Ostos has my papers from 16 years in the assembly <laughs> and my office has my papers from 23 years in Congress and I hope that the former president of, of, of El Centro and the new president of El Centro and the new president of Osos can work it out and then they can tell me where my papers will be and if they have to be in two places, that's fine. Because, that's, but there's a lot, of, a lot of history there, a lot of pictures with Fidel and Hugo and everybody else and there's, there's a lot of history. But in closing, let me just tell you that this is a great night and this is a great struggle and we should not give it up. We Puerto Ricans have a, have a history in this city that needs to be told, that needs to be spoken to. I, like I said, I remember my father picketing for one hour of Spanish TV. Now I can't keep up with the networks <laughs> that ignore us on a daily basis. And uh, I remember when El Diario was El Diario and La Prensa was La Prensa and I was El Diario La Prensa and in those days, and I said it in an ad I bought for El Diario. I said El Diario, to their credit, was at the vanguard of the first Latino political movement, which was a Puerto Rican political movement. I was given a picture as the elder statesman, and I was told, can you identify for El Diario who's in this picture? I said, I may not be able to identify who's in this picture. I can tell you one thing. They're all Puerto Ricans, you know? <laughs> 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 because it was at that time in our history. So how come when I wanted to be a stand-up comedian, people didn't laugh the way you're laughing tonight? You know? It could have been different for me, you know? <laughs> Lady, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your, for your time. And, uh, and, and since we sang both anthems, let me tell you that 
that the danger to this country continues to be people like the Tea Party, and and they 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 seem to want no central government, and the next thing they're going after is Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and we will stand strong, and if it means whatever it means, we won't let them touch any of those three programs. And I thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so I think that was uh, worth waiting for. Okay, we're gonna continue with our program now and our first speaker, well, Hunter College has received a claim for an enhanced and vigorous search and appointment of high caliber professors for attracting high achieving students and raising the bar in competition for admission. And additionally, there have been some relocation or reallocation of assets as one example among several, the reallocation of the School of Social Work to El Barrio. Ladies and gentlemen, the leader whose vision is responsible for modernizing El Centro's library and archives facilities and our host this evening, please welcome the president of Hunter College, Ms. Jennifer Rabb. Muchas gracias, bienvenidos, buenas noches. I am just so grateful for tonight. I'm grateful to be privileged to speak tonight. Mostly I'm grateful to see so many people out here to support the so incredibly important El Centro because we've made it to this incredible 40 year mark, but to see the passion, the commitment, and really the love in this audience tonight for this incredibly important institution, this incomparable mission, says that there will be another 40 years and another 40 after that. This is an incredibly <laughs> important. And as the president, I am so grateful to have incredible leadership at El Centro. And Edwin Melendez, El Jefe, uh, I do whatever he tells me to do. So I know he's coming up, but I want to give him a round of applause. And it, tonight we would be remiss tonight in speaking of leadership to not really say an enormous gracias to Felo Matos Rodriguez. When I started at Hunter College, yeah, I'm gonna keep talking around because he's here. <coughs> and I asked him to bring his, his wife and his children here today because they also gave up a lot as Felo worked tirelessly to build El Centro. And when I became president 12 years ago, if Felo wasn't the first person in my office, he was the second. And he was so passionate, and he was really speaking to someone who loves history, is a true New Yorker, someone who grew up in Washington Heights, was so absolutely connected to the diaspora of the Puerto Rican people in the, the United States, that it was clear, so clear to me that we had to invest and really make central all it could be. And we had a vision that we would be able to have a place where the archives could be accommodated where the community could have more access and more understanding, where we could take this extraordinary trove of treasures in the archives and display them and explain them and bring the city's children in to see these incredible documents, these incredible works of art. And in this building, in this beautiful building, we're doing that. And we're connecting these archives to our School of Social Work, our School of Public Health, and to so many other things at Hunter so that their research agenda grows. And it's a small blessing to, for me to be able to have been a part of ensuring that Centro gets the respect, the space, the attention, and is in a community that is so loving and so welcome to it. And Robert Rodriguez is here. I know Marisa Marquez Rito. These were political people who came to the fore and made this all happen for us. I want to thank you, Robert. Really <laughs> extraordinary. Um, and I do want to say to uh, Senator Serrano, who made so much possible that if Nita Lowy can be a cardinal, maybe this Jewish girl can negotiate the Ostos and uh, Central split on the papers. Um, so. Uh, two other, we have a wonderful board. We're gonna hear soon from Dennis Rivera, but I don't know that there's any more committed, more extraordinary public figure, leader, never claiming any credit, never being in the forefront. But without Dennis, I don't think this evening would happen and the support and, and really love that we have in the city for Centro would not be possible. So Dennis, really, you, you're an extraordinary person and thank you for everything at Centro. 
And CUNY is our home, and without people on the CUNY board for which Centro is a part of their life and their blood and their understanding of keeping history alive so that we are not condemned to not understand the past, but instead to actually understand our history so that we can move forward, um, we, this wouldn't be possible. Trustee DiMartino, you need to stand so all of us can say thank you to you. And I'm gonna, I want to cede my last two minutes to our Deputy Mayor of New York City, our CUNY trustee, Carol robes Roman, who is really a walking picture, I think, of why Centro is so important. As a very modest person, she often doesn't talk about this incredible family that she comes from, political activists in Brooklyn, and three daughters, one more successful, extraordinary, committed, and leaders in their field. Carol, we are so lucky to have you in the city and as part of CUNY, and I know Centro is a passion of yours, and on behalf of all of us, we thank you for your leadership at CUNY and this important endeavor. Carol. Thank you, uh, President Rabb. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you all for just joining us in this incredible celebration. I also want to acknowledge the incredible leadership of uh, Dr. Melendez. You have really put this 40th anniversary celebration on the map, and we're here to commemorate a lot of different things. We're here to commemorate Centro. We're also here to really own, truly own its mission of documenting and preserving and educating all of us about Puerto Rican heritage, history, and culture, not just for us, this is for our children, and this is for our generations to, to come. And this has been, as, as President Rabb uh, mentioned, it has been also a, a professional uh, mission and passion of mine, and it has also been a, a personal one. And if you allow me the indulgence, I wanna share something that really brings this point home, and I mean really home. Uh, the resources at El Centro have been personally relevant to, to my family and to me in uncovering the history of my family's legacy and the history of activism throughout the centuries, dating back to the 1700s. That's on my mother's side, the Diaz. Now, the Robles is kind of passive, but that's... <laughs> my sister, a distinguished professor at Brooklyn College, Dr. Sally Robles, now, she's had that PhD for 20 years, but I just love saying Dr. Sally Robles. Uh, Dr. Robles is currently researching uh, and writing a book on our family history. Think sort of a Latino roots, right, by Alex Haley. So this will maybe be called Raices, working title. So she found, with the help of the Puerto Rican Genealogical Society, and with the researchers at El Centro, this incredible history of our ancestors that we had no ideas. We found out that the often, oftentimes, you know, we have a little streak that runs through us, right? It's like a, a combative streak. And that comes out in the defense of all things Puerto Rican. And we found out that, okay, it's not just me, Carol Robles, and it's not just my mom, but this spans 200 years. And researching through El Centro's books, we found ab out about our distant cousins, Jose and Francisco Diaz, who helped fend off the attempt by the British in 1797 to occupy Puerto Rico. Sergeant Francisco Diaz, although vastly outnumbered by the British, he gave them hell. He advanced his men under enemy fire until he reached the enemy trench. Sergeant Major Jose Pepe Diaz, after his death, was named the King of Spain's bravest soldier. Their bravery was later immortalized in a Puerto Rican childhood song. And the legacy of activism continued. Shortly after the United States military occupation of Puerto Rico in 1898, the first political dissidents to be imprisoned by the United States military governor, Guy Henry, were Puerto Rican journalists critical of the colonial regime. They were imprisoned and their newspapers closed down. 
In 1899, Evaristo Iscoa Diaz, publisher of El Combate, was arrested, jailed, and found guilty of mailing obscene materials in the first ever United States jury trial in Puerto Rico. What were those materials? They were newspapers filled with anti-American sentiment. <laughs> and so these powerful historical backdrops in a way helped explain to me how my role model for Puerto Rican activism came to be. And that would be my mother, Ines Robles Diaz, who died last year. My mother's activism in East New York, Brooklyn was carefully document, documented by Dr. Robles in an article entitled in for the Latinas in the United States Historical Encyclopedia, which was published several years ago. And she was memorialized as committed to helping the poor, the disenfranchised, and to improving the living conditions of Puerto Ricans. Activist, social entrepreneur, businesswoman, her lifelong commitment to improving the living conditions of Puerto Ricans in New York led to her community activism. I remember the marches, and I remember the sit-ins, and I remember it all that she led with my dad and the organizations that they founded. Action Civica Hispana, later Ladies Committee for Puerto Rican Culture, and a whole host of others. And I remember sitting there and stamping and licking, and then just going out. I said, why doesn't, why doesn't my mother spend more time at home with me? Where are those damn cookies that everybody else's mother's baking? It is these stories, our stories, that represent the powerful history of all Puerto Ricans, that El Centro's academic mission takes hold. So on behalf of the CUNY Board of Trustees, and with your indulgence in memory of Ines Robles Diaz, I want to salute Centro, I want to salute everyone who is part of this magnificent institution. And yes, not 40 more years, 400 more years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And thank you very much again, Jennifer Rath. Uh, <clears throat> to continue our program, our next speaker is a man who has not only led one of the largest and most powerful labor unions in our city and nation, but who has actively worked to steer resources to El Centro. Please give a warm welcome to labor's devoted friend and the chair of El Centro's advisory board and of course its 40th anniversary celebration Mr. Dennis Rivera. Well, th thank, you for, thank you for being here tonight. Um, for me, uh, and first of all, I want to thank uh, uh, President Rab for the time that she takes to make sure that we in El Centro have all the resources that we need, and, and Edwin, who does such a, an amazing job. Uh, for me, uh, basically, is, uh, and, and for all of you being here, being uh, active in El Centro is basically being proud of our heritage, is being proud of our culture, is being proud of being Puerto Rican, is making sure that we want uh, uh, the world to know that we are very proud of who we are as, as a people and we want to uh, uh, let that be known. And I think that is uh, more important than, uh, than ever right now, the role of El Centro. Uh, because for historical reasons, right now, the majority of the Puerto Rican population lives in the United States. And th that interpretation, that explanation of who we are and about our culture, our history, and our future, it's, it's, it's very important right now, more than ever, uh, for El Centro. So I see in El Centro a new vigor, a, a new uh, rededication to the values and to the vision and the mission of El Centro. And, and, and the, and the uh, example for, of that is here tonight, with your participation, with your presence, you're validating that, and I, I, I let to, I, I'm led to believe, uh, and I want you to think like me, that in the, the, the best days of El Centro are ahead, the best days of El Centro are uh, ahead of, and you are all gonna help us make it a better Centro, a more powerful Centro, 
a centro that we could even be more proud than we are of it today, and a centro where everybody has a place, where everybody can contribute, where everybody can help us make it better so we can show the world how proud we are of our heritage, our culture, and our being for the region. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Our new slogan, the best days are ahead, okay? Well, now, what better way to live a dream and to demonstrate and pay honor to our homeland than to be responsible for collecting and documenting the history of the Puerto Rican migration to New York City and the states? In recent years, he has made El Centro de Estudios Puerto Riqueños the premier resource and forum for students, academics, sociology, virtually anyone who wants to know anything about Puerto Ricans and the struggles as well as the achievements as attained and the contributions made to America. These are but some of the goals pursued and accomplished by our next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, el director, el jefe, nuestro líder, the director of El Centro, Dr. Edwin Melendez. Buenas noches. ¿Cómo están? Bien? Me alegro, me alegro. Por favor, between that and spilling all my lines before I got here, I don't know what else to say, I, I gotta tell you. In any case, this is a very festive occasion. I'd really like to start by thanking you all for being here, but as importantly, uh, my two uh, benefactors, really, uh, President Jennifer Rapp and, and Dennis Rivera, and to them I'd really like another round of applause because <laughs> I know I know this half of the aisle is here because of her, and this side of the aisle is here because of him. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the, report, uh, the support that they've given me over the last uh, five years. It's been five years, folks. Uh, they, they look a lot longer to me, but they're five years, okay. <laughs> In any case, I, 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 I really think that this is a very festive occasion. We're celebrating too many things about Centro. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I think we're celebrating the fact that Centro is a think tank, that someone documents what's going on with our communities, that we put out information that benefit uh, community leaders, that benefit public officials, and benefit all of those who like to do uh, target policies and design strategies that actually benefit our, our community. As a matter of fact, part of what we do uh, we've released uh, tonight the State of Puerto Ricans 2013, the first of several reports that, uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Someone is paying attention. Uh, thank you. Uh, so tonight we, uh, is better? Uh, my bo voice projects well. In any case, we're releasing the State of Puerto Ricans tonight. It's just a sample of uh, the kind of research that we're putting out that is Agile and all that, but they also put academic books, and you can go to the to the conference rooms and and scroll through them and and uh, and find more information about that. But we also celebrate the Central Library and Archives. As you know, we just concluded uh, a year-long campaign that, that we call the 100 Puerto Ricans, and the goal there was to bring a hundred new uh, additional collections to our archives. We have over 260 but we felt that they were not quite representative of all the transformations and all the contributions that our community have undertaken and all the, all the uh, beautiful things that we have out there. And tonight, if you look around, there are people with the badges. They, uh, we, we like to thank them because they have donated, uh, they have pledged to donate. They don't know how much work there is ahead of them, but, <laughs> but they have pledged to donate their papers to us, and that's very important. Uh, you know, I, I don't even want to start telling you what is involved in this, but, but it's quite a, a work ahead, not only for them, who are going to narrate their stories, who are going to collect uh, photos and other documents, but for us to organize it, to digitize it, and to make it available to you all over the country, to, uh, to really make uh, those uh, uh, archives, uh, those documents, available to anyone who wants to uh, un uh, study them and understand them, uh, whether they're in Florida or they're in Chicago or they're in New York, whatever they, wh wherever they are. So we collected 134 collections. So we more than surpassed our goal, and there are more to come. I see some people that don't have their, their, their so we're coming after you too. <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, among the 100 Puerto Ricans, there is a very important person, a uh, very uh, special person that is not here with us tonight, 
However, uh, his sister, Ruth, where are you? Where are you? Ruth, please stand up. Ruth Laviera, uh, who is sent in Tato. Uh, all I have to say, it's a very, it's a very special, it's a very special uh, collection for all. Tato Laviera, who presents a lot to our community. Tato always wanted to have uh, his collection here. Uh, in which way? Well, tonight uh, it is uh, with great pleasure that we also introduce the guide to Central Archives. There are more uh, about more than 260 uh, collections. We documented them. When you go out, you're going to receive a copy of that. You should scroll through it, and you can see the richness and the depth of the collections that we have. Uh, well, we also celebrate the dissemination of the Puerto Rican experience through cultural events and through other means. You always receive our calendars and so forth. But I, they, we have a special treat for you because it's our 40th uh, anniversary. Uh, and that treat is that we have put two wonderful exhibits out there. If you haven't seen them, you're going you're gonna to be uh, really, uh, it's, they're marvelous exhibits. And we have some of the people that made that possible with us. And the artists uh, have place to uh, have a conversation with those who are interested after all the ceremonies are over and what have you. But those artists are very special to us. I think I've, I've seen a few of them coming in through tonight. Uh, I know Roca is here somewhere. I, I don't see her, but, but she's, she's somewhere here. Uh, oh, hola. Uh, Marcos Dimas I saw coming in. Uh, Marcos, uh, I, don't, I haven't seen the other artists, but Johanna uh, Ballester, uh, Sofia Maldonado, and, uh, and Adrián Román. You can go check their work. I also saw a couple of the curators of Postres de Wall, uh, Juanfe, uh, uh, Juan Fernando uh, uh, Morales, and Miguel. I saw you too, Miguel Reyes. Reyes. Where is Miguel? Oh, why don't you push across? Oh, there we go. But anyway, so they're going to be around later on to, to talk a little bit. It's a treat. It's really a treat. You got to go uh, check it out. And that uh, Postres on the Wall is a traveling exhibit, so soon it's going to be in Lower East Side and then to the rest of the world. Uh, but, um, but I have to say that uh, more than anything, we celebrate Central's role in education. Education for us is very important. We have to train the new generation. As parents, we want our kids to learn uh, their, about their heritage, about their history. We want to train our students to be able to uh, understand and really understand how it is that ethnicity and identity make a difference in all our lives every day. Um, and for that, I think we're going to have a, a big display of stuff downstairs, and you, I'm not going to go too much into it. But I have to say something. As part of this celebration, we went national, national, todo el resto del país. So tonight, in those affinity events that we celebrate the 100 Puerto Ricans, and there are photos all over, you're going to see in the program, it was a great uh, welcoming to Centro and to the nation of Centro. Uh, I think we have people, uh, Jose está por ahí de Chicago, right? There you go. Jose, say hello. And we have, we have quite a few people from Florida, from uh, Central Florida. Right? Oh, Chicago, yeah. Chicago, Central Florida. Uh, there you go. So, we, you know, there are Boricuas here from all over the country. The, this is a very festive occasion. They took the, the and they're helping us locally to put this, uh, all this stuff together. So, uh, in short, this is a, an occasion to celebrate. And there is more to come. Uh, after we're done with all the speeches, there's going to be a concert. Uh, Bowie is, is getting ready to, to do this. But I, I, I want to uh, close by acknowledging all the people that are here that have helped us throughout the years to make uh, what Centro is becoming today. We have some advisory board members. Jose Luis uh, is there. Jose Luis Rodriguez. I see Juan Cartagena, Susana Leval. And if I'm missing someone, you know, raise your hand. I, uh, uh, it's a crowded, uh, crowded guy. But in any case, we also have uh, Assemblyman uh, Marcos Crespo and uh, Robert Rodriguez uh, is here. Robert. Uh, and, and, uh, and of course, we have recognized our, our trustees. So in any case, thank you all for uh, your support. Oh. oh, we also have from the Office of Governor Cuomo, Emily Salzman, uh, the Director of Community mm -hmm. Affairs. Emily, where are you? Uh, uh, Emily, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so in any case, uh, please enjoy the music, the festivity. Uh, we have good company, for sure. We have food. Uh, so uh, let's just look forward to the next uh, 40 years. Muchas gracias. Que disfruten.
Okay, you know, when we talk about the archives, I always think of them in terms of crown jewels because that's really what they are. Everything that's been accomplished by these great Boricueños, you know, is here in these walls. And um, Dr. Alberto Hernandez Banucci is El Centro's keeper of these crown jewels. He is associate director of El Centro, and since 2008, he has served as a chief librarian and archivist for all the documents, photos, films, and videos donated to and otherwise acquired by El Centro. Uh, please welcome him now because he has the greatest, greatest job of all tonight, introducing two wonderful people, and I'm so jealous that he gets to introduce them because I absolutely love them. Okay, Alberto. Buenas noches. It's a real honor to be here with all of you. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, I will be very short. We have two distinguished members here in front of us, um, very special people. I want to be very short. Vidal Garin, poet, educator, co-founder of New Yorican Poet Cafe, a pioneer who brought New Yorican poetry to wider and diverse audiences and provided a stage for emerging performance and visual artists. Thanks, Miguel, for making us proud when they call us New Yorkans. I want to thank you. Yeah, you know. Come back down to the New Yorkan and spend some money. Yeah. I got two things to say to you, to add to you. Uh, I was returning from Puerto Rico, and as I was getting off the plane, an issue rose about what was I. And the guy in back of me said, New Yorican. And then the other guy said, I'm a Neo Rican. And I said, Damn, I'm not one of those things. I'm a N U Y O R I C A N, New Yorican. And that stuff somehow means something for people to have their identity labeled with some pride. Then the second part, and then I'm through, was my mommy. And mommy, if she were here, she'd be so proud. And um, she gave me the surprise of my life when she died. And we went into her closets and records about the family and found almost 80, po 80 songs written by my mother, sung by nobody. And Alberto's going to help me get them to your ears, you see? Uh, so enjoy yourselves. A wonderful woman follows me, so I'll let him do the honors. Thank you. And next, como dicen que siempre las cosas van a la última. Ms. Miriam Colombayo, actress, director, founder of the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater, a trailblazer blazer in bringing bilingual theater to our community and for nurturing emerging and seasoned playwrights, actresses, actors, and professors of the theater, producers, directors, designers, and technicians. Miriam, take the honor. Bueno, bueno. Yo no tengo discurso. I have no speech. I've changed my mind. When I came into this uh, room earlier today, and I started to see so many of my old friends here, so many known heroes, my mentors, the warriors that have taken this community and have taken so many battles, and I was very moved that I was among them. 
And I wanted to say, yes, I need a few minutes to tell you how great is my, my gratefulness to you. I'm a beneficiary. I'm a, I, I am a, a, a warrior in my own ways, but uh, the history of my life has been good teachers, good friends, mentors, people who helped me. And this place is packed tonight with people who have helped the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater, and I love you. <laughs> Therefore, I cannot resume in a, in a sentence uh, what is the formula. I don't know what the formula is. I'm still looking about to see if I can find it, you know, but the formula also has to do with commitment, and it has to do with the realization not only in us, the artists, the producers, the directors, etc., but a realization in you, who are our families, who are our people, that it cannot be done, that everybody has to join in the battle, that to establish an institution that to make it stay, that to make it permanent, we need not just the government, no, local, city, federal, not just the corporations and foundations, not just the uh, foundations, etc. It has to do with you, the people, you taking an interest, you participating, you caring, you uh, giving a, a call, a helping hand to somebody that you know is struggling, to some student that needs to be directed correctly, <laughs> to share, to share, to give uh, ourselves and to continue our pride in terms of the contribution that we are making to this country, to the world, and it has to do not with money, not with a lot of things. It has also to do with a spiritual quality. It has to do with the determination that we are proud of ourselves and that we have a lot to contribute and have contributed and will continue to contribute in terms of spirituality, in, in terms of valor, in terms of commitment, in terms of kindness uh, for each other and and I, I, I just have to say thank you. I love you. I love you very much. I am proud to be here. I would like to recognize a Puerto Rican woman that I know, that I admire, that I feel like a, a sister to her, and she's here tonight. And I would like you to give a round of applause to Rosalba Rolón, the director and founder of Pregone. Hey. Thank you very much. Pregones and the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater are working towards a merger, and you will be hearing from her and from me. And I, uh, I invite you to give her your total cooperation, your love, your support. Muchas gracias.
You know, as a member of the broadcasting <coughs> industry for more than 30 years and part of the entertainment arena, I can tell you that Miriam Colong has been a real trailblazer, has made it possible for so many of us to participate in those arenas, and I again want to thank her and uh, Miguel for opening those doors for us, okay? Um, and speaking of the entertainment arena, before I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge hermano Jerry Rivera, who is here with us today, okay? <laughs> and also I see um, a good friend who I just met, uh, Brenda Torres, and I say a good friend because she is heading up the New York office of Prafa, but also more important, and I'm sure she will take, not, not take offense to this, Juan Hernandez Mayoral, the jefe, okay, the executive director of Prafa with us today. Okay, thank you. All right, please stand. Okay, well, that um, brings us to our concluding event, uh, which is just for me to tell you to enjoy it and uh, to hear the music of Bobby Sanabria and the Quartet Atrio. So please, muchísimas gracias for Hunter's 40th anniversary. I'm Anna Cardinal. Be good to yourselves and be proud of yourselves.